Russia has begun using a powerful aerial bomb that has decimated Ukrainian defenses and tilted the balance on the front lines. It has done so by converting a basic Soviet-era weapon into a gliding bomb. The use of FAB bombs has become a critical element in the Russian offensive in Donetsk region, especially in raising to the ground Ukrainian defenses in and around Avdiivka, which fell in February. Newly released footage shows Russian forces striking a Ukrainian town using what pro-Kremlin sources have claimed is one of the most potent non-nuclear weapons in the world. The video began circulating on Russian and Ukrainian media of a vacuum bomb being dropped on the town of Vovchansk in the country's northeastern Kharkiv Oblast. Ukrainian news agency Insider UA posted the video to its Telegram channel, citing Russian military bloggers who said that the bomb was the ODAB-9000, a three-ton glide bomb, sometimes referred to as the father of all bombs. In the video, the bomb can be seen descending from the top right corner of the screen, exploding in the already derelict city and damaging the surrounding buildings. A pro-Ukrainian Telegram channel shared the video but said that the munition was the ODAB-3000 thermobaric bomb and that the use of the more powerful explosive was a lie spread by Russists, a Ukrainian term used to refer to members and backers of the Russian armed forces. A thermobaric or vacuum bomb draws in oxygen to generate intense high-temperature combustions. According to the International Review of the Red Cross, an international law-focused academic journal produced by the humanitarian organization, the use of thermobaric weapons in built-up civilian areas could constitute a war crime. Russian mill bloggers have continued to share the footage and reiterated claims that the bomb was the ODAB-9000, which one called the most powerful non-nuclear munition in the world. A decision was made to use something awesome in Vovchansk, the ODAB-9000 vacuum bomb. The first use during the entire war, another prominent pro-Kremlin channel wrote alongside the video. I doubt that any of them survived, it added, using a common ethnic slur for Ukrainians. Russia's strike in Volchansk comes only days after its troops were driven from the town's Volchansk chemical plant by Ukrainian forces. Satellite images of an aircraft hangar at a key Israeli military air base taken after a massive barrage of Iranian missiles appear to show a large hole in the roof. Images of the Nevedim air base in southern Israel on Wednesday show the damage to the roof in a row of buildings near the main runway. Large pieces of debris can be seen spread around the building. It was not clear what caused the damage. Israel's military did not immediately respond to a request for comment about the satellite images. Nevedim is home to the Israeli Air Force's most advanced aircraft, including US-produced F-35 Lightning II stealth fighter jets. It is not clear from the satellite imagery whether any aircraft were in the hangar when it was struck. Nevedim also sustained light damage during an Iranian missile and drone attack in April. Speaking out against Israel's ground offensive in southern Lebanon, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan claimed on Tuesday that Israel would set its sights on Turkey next. In a speech marking the opening of parliament following its summer recess, Erdogan criticized both the international community and the Islamic world for failing to stop Israeli operations in Gaza and Lebanon. He vowed to stand strong against Israel and to support Lebanon. The Netanyahu government is dreaming a crude dream that includes Anatolia, Erdogan claimed, referring to a large swathe of Turkey. The place that the Israeli administration will set its sights on after Palestine and Lebanon, with complete religious fanaticism, will be our homeland, he added. No matter what the cost, Turkey will continue to stand against Israel and call on the world to join this honorable stance, he said. Vaad edilmiş topraklar hezeyanıyla hareket eden İsrail yönetiminin tamamen dini bir fanatizm ile Filistin ve Lübnan'dan sonra gözünü dikeceği yer açık söylüyorum. Bizim vatan topraklarımız olacaktır. 
Karşımızda tüm bölgeyi ateşe atmaya niyetli Netanyahu hükümeti Anadolu'yu da içine alan bir ham hayal kurmakta, Ütopya peşinde koşmakta bu niyetlerini de çeşitli vesilelerle ifşa etmektedir. Bedeli her ne olursa olsun Türkiye İsrail'in karşısında durmaya, dünyayı da bu onurlu duruşa çağırmaya devam edecek. Biz Türkiye ve Türk milleti olarak bu zor günlerinde Lübnanlı kardeşlerimizi asla yalnız bırakmayacak tüm imkanlarımızla kendilerini destekleyeceğiz. Hundreds of firefighters and volunteers in southern Greece battled a wildfire for a third day straight on Tuesday, in a blaze that has already killed two people and devastated a large forested area, prompting pledges of assistance from other European Union countries. Three waterbombing aircraft from Italy and Croatia were due to arrive later Tuesday after Greece requested help through the 27-country bloc's emergency civil protection mechanism. The Greek Fire Service said more than 400 firefighters, assisted by 22 aircraft, were engaged against the blaze in the rugged mountains of Corinthia in the Peloponnese region. The authorities were optimistic that progress had been made as the main front of the blaze was out, leaving a large number of scattered fires. However, it remained unclear whether that success could be expanded on before winds whipped up and spread the blaze again. Officials ordered that another village be evacuated as a precaution Tuesday, a day after half a dozen similar orders were issued. A major highway that was closed overnight as flames swept close by was reopened on Tuesday. The blaze destroyed a historic church in the mountains and reportedly damaged buildings outside the threatened villages, but the fire service was not immediately able to provide further details. The two victims were identified as local residents who got trapped late Sunday by the fast-advancing blaze. Greece, like other southern European countries, is plagued every summer by destructive wildfires that have been exacerbated by global warming. Over the past few months, the fire service has had to cope with more than 4,500 wildfires. This year's had been flagged as the most dangerous fire season in two decades after the countryside was left parched by a protracted drought and early summer heat waves. Still, Greece's big investments in extra water bombing aircraft, warning drones and other equipment have led to most blazes being extinguished shortly after they broke out. <laughs>